Hello students, the topic that we are going to learn today is organization of data. Now first of all we need to know that what are the topics that we are going to learn in this section. First of all we will be learning about what is organization of data and what are the methods of organizing a data. Now first of all the question out here is that what itself is a data. Alright, so what is data? So it's a collection of fact or information which is you can say a set of quantitative and qualitative variables and all is collected through observations. Now when I say a set of quantitative and qualitative variables, what exactly does that mean? See all the data that is collected in numerical form, alright, the itself the quantities or the characteristics which are measured in terms of numerical form are called quantitative data or we consider it as a quantitative variables all right and all the uh, data or information that is collected that itself is quality in nature we say them as a qualitative variable a few example would be about of quantitative uh, it's like we are talking about let's say about the um, salaries we are talking about height we are talking about weight so these are all uh, quantitative variables why because they are calculated in numerical forms in nature all right and if we talk about the qualitative so qualitative means colors if you're talking about the blood group we're talking about cars or these type of uh, things are we talking about animals so these are quality all right they are qualitative in natures so quantitative means any of the observations that is collected in terms of numerical form is quantitative variable and the things which are collected or are quality are representing quality in nature are called qualitative variables all right moving on okay now the question is that what is organization of data now to put the collected data that is we got we have even the observations are collected it's in raw form all right if we just collect all that information and we wanted to know a uh, certain information from that data it is very important to organize that data all right because if we just look at some raw data and we need some specific information about a specific group so looking at the raw data and then sorting it out is time consuming so first of all it is important that we organize the data so that it will help us to get the information in less amount of time and it's better in terms of presentation we just can't handle each and every raw data just like then we can't present anything from the raw data it's it's data it's facts they are observations so it is important to organize a data and it also Reference, uh, and there are methods of classifying and organizing set of data to make them more useful so with the organized data we can um, collect any sort of information and specific information as well which is less uh, uh, which we can get in in less time now what are the types of data there are two types of data first is called the ungrouped data and second is called the group data now first of all what is ungrouped data so the data obtained in its original formal or are called raw data or ungrouped data it is the data which has not been arranged in a systematic order now when we say that we collect observation it's all raw observation that is collected we're not grouping it so it's just a simple raw form of data the original data that is collected in general and then because it's not f uh, it does not follow any order it does not uh, represent any systematic order so that type of data is called ungrouped data we cannot um, fully obtain more information through ungrouped data because if it is in large number uh, it will be very difficult to um, to get information through that ungrouped data let's say if we have a set of observations which are in hundreds or which are in thousands so dealing with ungrouped data will be very difficult because first of all it will not be arranged in any order 
and if you're talking about a specific group of uh, observations that we are particularly looking for it will be very difficult for us to find out the exact information and sometimes what happen is the observation missed from in between so ungrouped data is actually the original form or raw form of data moving on to the group data okay to put the data in a more condensed form we make groups of suitable sizes and mention the frequency of each group such a table is called group frequency distribution table now group data means that if we have that raw data the raw set of observations and we just organize it them into certain classes into certain groups by taking some height and then mentioning uh, frequency now frequency basically means the number of counts all right so uh, uh, with their classes or with their groups we just mention the number of frequency of that particular group so that exactly is called group data now in that kind of data we can be more it it is more specific we can look through words specific information with no time within no time and we can it 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 is presented in a more suitable form so that we don't have to search for every particular information uh, when a, a raw data is given so a group data helps you analyze about a certain group if you're looking for more easily as compared to the ungrouped data now there are two main methods of representation of data the first method is basically the frequency distribution method all right and the second method is graphical or diagrammatic representations now uh, frequency distribution if we look at the frequency distribution because in this part of my video we will be talking about the frequency distribution later on we will be discussing about the graphical and diagrammatical representation of data okay now the first question out here that what is frequency distribution now frequency distribution is actually a visual display that organize and present frequency counts now frequency counts and organize and present means what and actually with each observation with each corresponding observation there is a number of frequency or the number of time it is appearing so that is actually a frequency and it is somewhat like a chart kind of thing it is represented in a chart form with such that with each observation there is their corresponding frequency all right so if you just go through it so it's a useful way to organize data if you have a list of numbers that represents the frequency of a certain outcome in a sample now there are types of frequencies so there are two types of frequency the first is ungrouped frequency distribution or simple frequency distribution and the second is the group frequency distribution thing is simple frequency distribution now the raw data or observation that is presented in more convenient and improved form is called simple frequency distribution or simple frequency array now the thing out here we need to know that what exactly a array so an array is the arrangement of raw data in an ascending or descending order of magnitude is known as array so arrangement of data in ascending or descending order is array now if you talk about the grouped frequency distribution so another way of arranging a data is by grouping the observations into intervals and then tabulating or calculating the frequencies for each interval as i told you before that if we are wanted to group a, a set of observations what we can do out here is that uh, classes of suitable height and size are taken and with each class we mark its frequency so that actually means that we're talking about the group frequency distribution so if you just go through the definition it says that uh, another way of arranging a data is by grouping the observations into intervals and tabulating the frequencies for each interval which results in group frequency distribution okay now let's just consider an example so the marks scored by students in the subject mathematics are given below all right so these are the marks of students uh, which are given and the above data is said to be raw data or ungrouped data now as you can see there are how many observations are there two four six eight ten 
12 14 16 18 20 so there are 25 observations so uh, the uh, the total frequency is 25 students so these are the marks of 25 students that is scored in subject mathematics now there are three ways first of all to organize the data into logical form now if you're talking about this data we can array the data we can use simple frequency distribution or we can use group frequency distribution now using all of these above methods all right we will be using all these methods and we will solve our example now first of all array now as i said that array is basically arrangement of data in ascending or descending order so it's the table that is um, the marks of the students out here is added in ascending order now, as you can see starting from 26 28 29 31 32 35 36 49 40 40 these are all the number of observations that were given before uh, they were all dispersed we just arranged it in ascending order so this is the first form of organizing a data or first way of showing the data now the second is simple frequency distribution now what simple this um, simple frequency distribution is and how it is calc it is uh, organized or you can say that how we can organize a data a raw data into simple frequency distribution is that ex is that it's somewhat like this okay it's a chart type of representation as you can see the first column is of marks the second column is of number of students which is the frequency as i told you all that uh, frequency means the number of counts all right so as you can see in total there were 25 observations all right but yeah there were 25 observations so starting from 26 all right from the minimum observation that was given to me or if you just go back a little all right if you can see the minimum observation is 26 the maximum observation is 55 all right so what I did is uh, that all the observations that were given in my raw data or that is collected in the raw data I have just put them into chart form into tabular form see 26 28 29 31 so until 55 because the maximum marks given were 55 now the number of frequencies since 26 was appearing one time so the number of frequency is 1 28 is appearing once 1 as you can see 40 was appearing twice in the set of data so number of counts or number of frequencies is written as 2 42 was appearing three times 43 was appearing four times 46 was appearing three times all right so this is how you represent a simple frequency distribution in which a particular or single observation is given all right and we represent it and we just uh, count uh, we take the number of count according to the number of observations given to us let's say like this 26 28 29 these were all the observation that were given to me and i just put it in in a tabular form and mark their frequency corresponded to their observation all right the one thing that i need to tell you is this symbol this is basically means submission all right sum of now this is f so f represents frequency all right so f represents frequency and it is sum of frequency now that means we start counting all these numbers one plus one plus one plus one all these number up till here all right all these frequencies from here and all the numbers from here so the total is 25 so sum of f means that we count all the frequency in total moving on to the group frequency distribution now to get a still better idea of frequency distribution we reclassify the data into groups which will present the data into more compact form or frequency distribution is called group frequency distribution now as you can see okay let's just look at it first and then i'll tell you that why it is better to represent that data into group frequency distribution rather than representing it into a simple frequency distribution okay so this is how a 
um, uh, group frequency distribution looks now as you can see classes or class interval these are the frequency classes were the marks all right that were given to students and how many students that marks were given are written out here that is number of students now as you can see the minimum class is the number of classes like 26 to 30 31 to 35 36 to 40 41 to 45 46 to 50 51 to 55 and within this range within this interval the number of students appearing in this range is written as 3 now from 31 to the students that score 31 to 35 are 3 the students that scored between 36 to 44 41 to 45 7 46 to 50 5 51 to 55 3 now if you just add them together the total sum of frequency is 25 now as i said that it is better to represent this data into intervals into group frequency form rather than arranging it into simple frequency distribution why is that so see right now the observation the total frequency was given to us as 25 what if the frequencies or the total frequency is given as in hundreds it given it's given as in 75 85 or maybe 200 300 so organizing data and specifically when the range of marks is too much the minimum marks is scored by a student is 26 and the maximum marks scored by a student is 55 so if you start with 26 and end till 25 as we saw that in group frequency in simple frequency distribution so i've taken marks 26 28 29 all the marks that were appearing that were collected and then I've written it in chart form. All right. Let's say if the number of marks are given are in hundreds. So representing in this form is also another lengthy process. It will. It's not even compact. So we need to look at the observation that we're looking for. All right. And so it's better to represent that data into this compact form which is more convenient it is more readable you can read it easily i'm not saying that simple frequency distribution are of no good use yes they are when when uh, the range of numbers are given uh, the, there is the range of number is small all right and the frequencies are given doesn't matter if the frequencies are given in uh, in hundreds or thousands but the no range of numbers are small so the best way out there is to represent the data into simple frequency distribution but if the numbers itself the the interval the numbers are out here if you talk about the marks were given in the range from 26 to 55 that's starting from 25 till 55 there are a lot of numbers in between what if these numbers are not till 55 it's still 100 there's so many numbers so the better and compact form is to organize such data into group frequency distribution i hope that you have understood the group distribution of what exactly a group distribution is and how it looks like uh, i hope you have understood a simple frequency distribution and how it looks like in my upcoming videos we will be learning that how we will organize a data into group frequency distribution and what are the data that we can represent in uh, in simple frequency distribution all right thank you